Hi, so in this video we're going to start looking at proof by induction. Proof by induction allows us to prove some statements that are harder to prove by other methods. Okay, so the way that we do this is we first prove it for an integer or a whole number. Most commonly that's going to be n equal to 1 because 1 is very easy to prove for a lot of statements. Then what we're going to do is we're going to do the inductive step, which is step 2, we call it. That is where we assume that it is true for n equal to any integer, okay? So it doesn't really matter what integer it is, we're just, we're just assuming it's true for an integer. Then for step three, if I'm able to prove it for any integer n equal to k plus one, then that suggests that if it's true for n equal to one and it's true for n equal to k plus one, well, also, if we've assumed that it's true for n equal to k, that means it is true for the next integer, for every integer that it is true for. So, if it's true for n equal to 1, then it's true for n equal to 2, because it's true for the next integer. If it's true for n equal to 2, then it's true for n equal to 3, and so on, and so on, and therefore it is proven for every pr pr occurring integer after the one that we've proven it for. Okay? So I kind of messed up the recordings, so some wording is going to appear on the board. Uh, for example, one where I am going to prove it for n equal to 1, and then I will continue talking. Okay? What's also going to appear on the board is second step, uh, where I assume that it's equal to k. So that will be when I re fully replace all of the n's in the statement with k's, at uh, the inductive step, the assumption. And then what I'm then going to do on the board is step three, where I'm going to start proving it for n equals to k plus, k plus one. So initially I will just change the k's to be k plus ones, and then I will need to somehow prove the statement to be true. So now what we need to do is prove that it's true for n equals to k plus one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to expand all these brackets. So now it might not look like we are able to do much in terms of proving that it's divisible by 3, but I'm going to rearrange this expression. Looking at first at the inductive step, k cubed plus 2k, because we know that's true, or rather we're assuming it's true. If I can somehow create that part of the function within my new, new function, I can assume that that's true and I can just immediately eliminate it. So what I've done is I've split the k cubed plus 5k up into k cubed plus 2k plus 3k. And if you look at the inductive step, I know that k cubed plus 2k is divisible by 3.
So because I knew that k cubed plus 2k was divisible by 3, I could just change that for another value of another integer, for example. So say, let's call it 3b. That's divisible by 3. Substitute it back into the equation, and then I would be able to take out a common factor of 3 and then prove that it's true for all n equal to k plus 1, and then therefore true for all n greater than or equal to 1. So we move on to example 2. Quite a common style of exam question using the sum formulas and signal notation. So let's first of all straight away explain what's going on. Prove by induction for all n group of the set of natural numbers that the sum from 1 up to n of 3 bracket r squared minus r is equal to n minus 1 n n plus 1. Okay? So let's prove for n equal to 1. So because this is an equation, we need to be very careful with the way that we phrase it. I cannot use the equal sign because I've not proven it yet. So let me take the left-hand side and the right-hand side independently. I cannot write with n substituted in for 1 equals the le left-hand side equals the right-hand side because I don't know it's true yet. So I've proven it's true for n equals 1 because we've got 0 on the left-hand side and 0 on the right-hand side. So now let's do our inductive step. And now let's prove it true for n equal to k plus 1. Okay, so in terms of the signal notation, this can be some of the most confusing parts of the question. So I'm going to start from the left-hand side of the expression and get to the right-hand side of the expression in terms of k plus 1. Now if we look at what we're actually looking for in terms of our... Sorry, I walked away from the camera as I was speaking. If we look at what we're actually looking for in terms of our final solution, we're looking for three consecutive numbers, n minus 1, n, n plus 1. Our solution, if we were to be sort of thinking ahead, is going to be the next term in each of them. So the next one along from n minus 1 is going to be n, the next one along from n is going to be n plus 1, and then n plus 2. So you can kind of look, look ahead and be like, I know where I need to get. So we've always got that in our mind ahead that that's what I'm looking for in these sum notation ones. Okay, k, k plus 1, k plus 2. Okay, so now let's look at this. So let's start from the left hand side. Now, if we think about what this means, that is a sum from r equals 1 up to k plus 1 of 3 times r squared minus r. We could think of that as a sum of 1 up to k plus the k plus 1th term, okay? So it's not really how you would express it, but I'm just conscious that it's the video, whereas I've explained this if we're in class. So we've got r equals 1 up to k plus 1 is 3 r squared minus r. That's equal to 1 up to the k term plus the next term. 
Okay? And how do we find the next term? We substitute in k plus 1 to the sum formula. Okay. Well, then this looks like a whole lot of mess, but it's actually not. Because then if you check here, I've created a situation where I can just immediately replace the one up to k term, because I've assumed that that's true in this inductive step. So, we're trying to keep remembering what we need to do up at the top right. That's what we need to get to. And we're, we're significantly closer now. You can start to see it arriving. You could break out all those brackets. And I'm sure you'll be able to do that. It's just not the most convenient way of doing it. So I'll break it out kind of, and then I'm going to start looking for a common factor. My instinct tells me not to break out those brackets because a lot of them are in the final answer. Why would I break them out? Unless I absolutely had to. If you get to this point, you've got nothing like the final answer, maybe you would need to. But I can see that in here I've got k's and k plus 1's and I know in my solution I need k's and k plus 1's. So I'm going to take out a common factor as far as possible. So we've got k, k plus 1, I've taken that out. What's left in the first term of the, initial, of the previous line is just k minus 1. We've taken out a k, k plus, I've made a mistake. So my instinct tells me not to fully break out the bracket because in my solution that I'm starting to get, I've got k's and k plus 1's. And if you look at the top right, remember that, I'm looking for k's and k plus 1's in my solution. I, why would I get rid of them unless I absolutely had to? So what I'm now going to do is take out a common factor, okay? And you can see that the common factor in all those three terms is k plus 1. And now it might be an idea to break them out and refactorize, but it means it's a lot less work. And there we've proven it. And just if I was to fully put it in the form of the original equation, equation. Showing that I have indeed done k minus 1 and I've added the next term times k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1. Okay, and then I'll do my sentences. And that is 
two very classic examples of proof by induction. Proof by induction applied to what is kind of similar to a direct proof, and proof by induction applied to sigma notation sum formulas. Okay? And so that'll be the end of the video.